All right, we are back with more Reddit stories that we are reading and freaking out over. Uh, today, I have some great guests. Uh, we're joined by Noah and also Amanda from Swell Entertainment. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, a lot of people here are big fans of yours. Um, so thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks again for having me. I'm both uh, opinionated and nosy by nature and by trade. So okay. very excited for this. Hell yeah. Um, and you do a lot of content on TikTok, YouTube, all over the place. TikTok, YouTube, events, products. Like I'd like to say whatever I'm obsessed with that week. That's what I'm talking about. Fantastic. Which is the best part about being self-employed. Sounds awesome. <laughs> wait, wait, what's your obsession for this week? I'm going to Denver tomorrow to go to a furry convention. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That'll be fun. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Is that your first time at like a furry convention? Yes. Sounds interesting. <laughs> That's she's willing to admit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never been to one. I'm very curious. I'm very excited. I don't know yeah. how common they are. Are they common? They're, there's almost one furry at every single convention I've been to this year alone. Wow. So it'll be interesting to see like them all like in their domain. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think that's what I'm excited for. Well, go check that out at Swell Entertainment because it's there. And do you frequent Reddit? I try to avoid it. Yes. Yeah, after finding a few YouTube pages of, that I was featured on. Okay. <laughs> I, I just, not for me. It's not my place. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Well, here's some Reddit stories. <laughs> now here's Everything Reddit. Everything you missed out on. Yeah. Uh, here's a way to enjoy it with the, while avoiding yeah. that stuff. Am I the asshole for telling my coworker I'm tired of hearing about her nerdy obsession? Okay, so here's someone else who's obsessed with stuff, I guess. Uh, so I have a coworker who's a woman who's 27 who is absolutely obsessed with Transformers. Yes, you read that right. She has a massive collection of action figures and frequently brings one or more of them to work to show off. She talks endlessly about the movies slash cartoons slash comics, video games, to anyone who will stop long enough to listen. <laughs> she writes a ridiculous amount of fanfic that she also has to talk about. Almost every vacation she takes revolves around going to a Transformers convention, etc. Most everyone else seems to think it's a fun personality quirk or at least tolerates it, but it drives me bonkers because it's all she talks about. Like, get a life. <laughs> Last month, a number of us were discussing things we missed the most that were gone slash delayed due to the pandemic. Most people brought up visiting family, going to the movies, etc. Guess what this coworker missed the most? Yup, her conventions, which had all been canceled because apparently stuffing hundreds of nerds in a confined space isn't a good idea during a pandemic. I admit that I lost my shit at this point, and I told her, oh my God, will you just shut up? Nobody cares about your obsession. Find another hobby or just something else to talk about besides a stupid cartoon show and action figures. She clammed up and didn't speak to me for the rest of the day. Since then, I haven't heard her say a peep beyond work-related stuff, which is actually a relief, but other coworkers are saying I was the asshole for telling her to shut up and that they actually miss her ramblings about fictional robots. One of them even says I'm lucky this coworker didn't report me to HR. I don't think that what I said was HR worthy. If anything, I think I did her everyone a favor by getting her to stop talking their ears off about something only she cares about. But I'm wondering if I could have worded it better. <laughs> <laughs> I am wondering if I could have worded it better. I'm wondering if I could have told her to shut up in a better way. Yeah. <laughs> and that coworker? <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> like they're all like, hey, what did you miss? And then, yeah, this is what I missed. She answered the question. You yeah. answered the question. <laughs> hey, what did you miss about the pandemic? Uh, probably my conventions. Oh, well, you <laughs> shut up. <laughs> uh, damn, that's so, it's definitely weird to hear, because uh, in this field and being in YouTube, everyone has a nerdy obsession like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Like at Smosh, Almost everyone is obsessed with something similar, in a similar vein. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we have people over at Smosh Games who are building Gundams, you know, and I yeah. think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I can't imagine being upset about this. Have you ever like sat down and listened to someone who's like really into the stats of like basketball or like baseball or like knows all the players My brother, and they're talking yes. about <laughs> Yeah, it's like honestly Transformers yeah. makes a little bit more sense sometimes. <laughs> like really, if you're telling me like Todd McAvow is getting traded for like Tracy Evers and I'm just like I, going from the Broncos over to the Colts, I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, that'd be crazy if someone was talking about how like Broncos were the second rate ranked defense last year, but because they their offense was number thirty two that My eyes are glossing over it. <laughs> <laughs> I no, have been 
to a Transformers convention. Yeah? <laughs> oh, of course. Was it cool? It was, it's it's fascinating because it was definitely like, it wasn't even about like the show so much. It was about like the toys. Yeah. And like the the collectors and all that. And I don't think I've ever been to an event that was this closely related to like the black market because like the obsession with like how to get these toys, who has what, how much you're going to pay for it, all of that, very much <laughs> like, like I'm like, is this legal? <laughs> how much was the most expensive Transformer that you saw? Oh, God. God. Um, they had like a Unicron in a box that was like, literally when these guys were describing it to me, they were describing it using my proportions to describe how big it was. Okay. How and many views was, a, was the Unicron? <laughs> Is that what it's called? The it's, Unicorn? It's, it's, they called it the Unicron. It's I could a, be getting that wrong. Don't. I, I, to me, that <laughs> sounds like unicorn, attacking. but said wrong. Okay, so but, yeah. but so the was, unicorn. How much do you think it was worth? Like the, the number there, I heard was three thousand oh dollars for goodness. like a big unicorn. But like the, it was like people would walk up to tables and be like, "Okay, I'm looking for this, this, and this. Do you have this? No." And then would like move on. I was That's like, kind "This of awesome. is crazy." Wow, I love it. So I he is the asshole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Topic. He is the asshole. This person's an asshole. Yeah. I mean, this someone's allowed. There, people are allowed to be obsessed with their whatever they want to be obsessed yeah. with. And they're allowed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. If you're not interested, just be like, I got work to do. I'm sorry, I gotta mm -hmm. go. That's also okay. Yeah. Don't tell someone to stop talking about what they're into. Yeah. You know? The coworkers um, got a good point. They were like, uh, honestly, we kind of miss it. Like, yeah. what are we gonna talk about all day? Like bank stuff? <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, you took away my only joy. <laughs> hey, Stacy. Yeah? Tell me, tell me about Megatron. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, I want to hear about Megatron again. <laughs> <laughs> Got comments here. Uh, yeah, you're the asshole. I get it's weird, but it's what she's passionate about. I feel the same way when people won't shut up about sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're the asshole for how you talk to her. You could just say she's obsessed with Transformers. Instead, you write in an insulting manner and judge her over uh, an interest. I get being irritated hearing about it, but the way you write about her, even just in this post, makes you the asshole. Uh, and someone else said, you're the asshole and a condescending one at that. Why are you letting her hobby bother you so much? Yeah, I, a person's obsession is no different than yours. And, and yeah. just because it's deemed nerdy or deemed like every hobby you could boil down to being like, well, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every hobby. Yeah. That's kind so. of the point of a hobby, though. It's like yeah, exactly. it's something fun that you do, that you like, that you enjoy. Right. Yeah. Right. There is an update. Ooh. But the verdict was asshole. Yeah, of okay, course. Cool. It seems hardcore. Good. Huge asshole. Good. You're also going to the internet trying to like get yeah. everyone to get on board being like, yeah, I judge this person for yeah. a dirty thing. It's like, <laughs> yeah. The place to, everyone goes to yeah, to like share to about Reddit. their obsessions. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think yeah. of this corner? Yeah. Yes. Edit. Okay, I get it. I'm a piece of shit. Please stop <laughs> messaging me telling me so. <laughs> Update for those who care, I'm getting shunned and hated on enough at work that I'm currently looking for another job. I tried apologizing to my coworker and she gave an it's okay, but still refuses to talk to me. She's back to talking about robots again though, so I think she'll be okay. Uh, I will try to be more accepting of people's interests from here on out, even if it's too little, too late for my current workplace. I would also never speak to you again if you blew up at me, oh. like while we're having like a conversation, then all of a sudden it's like, actually, can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> I think the way she remedies this is if she got, she bought her like a $3,000 Unicron. Yeah. yeah, it needs a Unicron. Yeah, Get yeah. This is, this is something that can only solve via money. Like, the, <laughs> yeah. the yeah. only way to solve it. You know, if uh, you asked her, she'd probably be like, no, nah, he's not that big of an asshole. He's a f***ing Decepticon. <laughs> he's a Decepticon. <laughs> worse. <laughs> so, uh, Amanda, you are aware of book talk. Yes. Correct? Very okay. familiar with it. I think this next story involves book talk in some sort of way. I am also aware of book talk. Okay. I'm I love reading and I will occasionally. Book talk, oh, you're book talk is a crazy place. I, I've only skimmed past book talk. Okay. Times. I love reading and occasionally I will kind of like Google or look up like reviews on a book that I'm reading mm -hmm. or uh, just want to hear other opinions. And I will come across book talk opinions and they always take it to another level. Like, I'll be like, yeah, this book is really good. And then they're like, here's why this book is actually evil. And I'm like, what? I didn't realize this yeah. part of this book is evil. And they're oh like, here's why. And if you decipher this one sentence on this one page, it's actually the worst thing ever said by anyone. And I'm like, whoa, yeah. okay, I didn't realize this. Um, I'm just trying to enjoy Pinocchio. They are, they're nuts. Like, mm. they're having whole discourses that nobody else has ever had before. Wow. Yeah. It's, and it's a very small little pocket. 
No. Is it not that? I feel like it's not actually a huge so, population. Book Talk is massive. There's is a it? bunch of different strains within Book Talk. So, like, you have, right. like, classic literature Book Talk that, like, rediscovered their I'm love on of literature. Fantasy Book Talk. Fantasy Book Talk. Then okay. there's Smut Book Talk. They're oh. constantly in the, uh, the, they're the ones that cross over to Twitter discourse quite a bit. Okay. Because, it, like you said, it always goes to, like, the 10. Yeah. Because that's how you get views. Like, no one wants right. a lukewarm opinion. Right. Of, you can't just say I didn't like something. You have to say, actually, this is problematic. And if you like it, you're wrong. Like, you have to yeah. do that because that's what goes viral. And so, yeah, there, there's, I'm very, unfortunately, very entrenched in books. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's get into this. Am I the asshole for threatening to take away my sister's book from her if she keeps telling our parents what it's about? Okay. <laughs> Uh, the Bible. <laughs> uh, I'm a strong reader. I read a lot of books, typically the ones off of Book Talk or well known romance authors. I read a lot of romance, murder mystery, and fantasy books. My sister could not be more opposite, but recently she finished a book I recommended to her and she loved it. I pretty much turned her into me. I brought a few books with me while on holiday so I wouldn't run out of choices while on vacation. My sister started to get into reading, so I gave her a book which is a romance novel. It was King of Wrath by Anna Huang. Uh, she started to read and obviously started to enjoy it. I am also reading a romance novel which is more of a dark romance genre. It's called Haunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton. I f- Do you know this? I've read the book. Okay. <laughs> I will admit I was hesitant to letting my sister borrow my book because I knew she would make remarks or comments about the romance parts in front of my parents who are oblivious to the types of books I read. They know it's romance and I often tell them the plot of books I really enjoyed leaving out the romance bits. My sister insisted she would not do it and treat it as if it was a normal book, so I let her read it. She did the complete opposite and read parts of the book out loud, which are obviously not appropriate. She would show her boyfriend and then her boyfriend makes comments. Then she would suggest mom should read my current book and my mom became curious and tried to snatch the book from me. I told her I paid for it and she can't just snatch a book out of my hands. I was so annoyed and angry with my sister. She knows exactly what she's doing despite me asking her not not to so many times. She does it anyways. So I told her, if you keep being immature and doing what you're doing, I'll take away the book and give you something completely different to read instead. I've told you countless times to not be immature about it. You're 19 for God's sake. Grow up. If you do it again, you can buy your own books instead of borrowing mine. This annoyed her, but she knew I was right and she kept telling me mom and dad wouldn't do anything and I told her that's not the point. And I meant what I said, so she agreed not to do it again and has stopped, but occasionally she will announce that she's reading a sex scene out loud for everyone to hear, (laughs) including my mom and dad. She finds it hilarious, but it's not as annoying as it used to be, but each time I bring it up, she gets annoyed and yells at me. Am I the asshole? Uh, Edit, I really downplayed this, so let me clear up a few things. The reason I threatened to take away the book was because she read sex scenes in public at dinner, when we have guests or family over, and when she constantly nudges my parents to ask me what I'm reading. I feel ashamed and embarrassed, and what? And when I don't say anything, she says it's probably a sex scene. After she does this, everyone just goes silent and awkward, while she is laughing and it feels like it's on purpose so she can get me in trouble. Um, okay, wait, really quick. Okay, yeah. The poster, how old are they? So, if this is her younger sister... she's 19. So her younger sister is 19. Yeah. Yeah, that so was my question. Her, I was worried her, she was like 16 reading these books or no, something. No, she's in her 20s, like, so they're both okay. adults. Um, and how, I don't care what your parents know I'm reading. My dad and I share an Amazon account. Like, he sees what I'm buying. Right. <laughs> like, being an adult. <laughs> but, so, Haunting Adeline is the book. Okay. How... Yeah, wait, so I you, have read yeah. <laughs> I want a synopsis. Like, if I were to, like, YouTube, okay. like, you know, so. spark notes it. Okay. <laughs> Be ready with the gun. <laughs> um, so Haunting Adeline is a dark romance stalker book. Oh. Where uh, this girl buys a house, and she's, like, finding letters from her grandmother, who also got murdered in the house. Um, and then also, while she's in this house, um, a guy is stalking her, and then they end up having a relationship. She has a relationship with her stalker. So yeah, when they're saying romance scenes, they're... <laughs> wow! There's a, there's a scene with a gun. <laughs> oh, uh, so these aren't your regular... How red am I? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, not as red as you should be for the topic. <laughs> uh, Kiana had to heavily edit this because the Grammar, punctuation, and clarity was so bad. So this person's reading a lot, but they're... Not writing. <laughs> not, it's not, not the same thing. So the problem with also a lot of book talk books is because during lockdown, the voracity of the readership that was happening on book talk, people started 
rapidly self-publishing books without any editing and things like that. So a lot of books on BookTok that are like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever written. The quality of the actual writing is all not often up to par. Like it may not be traditionally published. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. That's but such people a strange... People really want to, they want to find wow. niche books. They want to find yeah. books like, oh, no. So like obviously if a dark romance stalker romance is doing well, then you're going to have 15 self-published authors who are like, let me rapid fire write out Got this it. stalker romance. Interesting. Whoa, um, sorry. Wow. Now my brain is like, people are gonna, two years from now, AI generates stalker romance novel. Like, that's weird. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> there were <laughs> COVID romance novels. Like, COVID comes to life and like, dates. <laughs> I thought you were about to be like, oh, in the pandemic, people fell in love, but no. you're saying COVID. The virus? The... Yeah. Well, at least yeah. they're 19. <laughs> yes. That's so Kissing crazy. the coronavirus. Kissing the coronavirus. There were three books. It was a trilogy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Different variants. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's. <laughs> my grandmother. She fell in love with Spanish flu. <laughs> I cannot do. I can't go down this path. <laughs> it was almost always like a scientist or something too. So it's like you know better. <laughs> You yeah, know what? Wait, I, what? I can, I can, wait, I can only respect that. I can only <laughs> respect it. I can't imagine. I, I also respect this younger sister for being comfortable with saying out sex scenes in front of her parents. Yeah. I can't imagine that. Like, Dude, I can't either. I'm just like, what are you doing? Can, I can't even process what that's like in reality. Like, you're yeah. trying to eat spaghetti and meatballs, and then she's just like, oh, let me tell you about the time the yeah. stalker breaks in. <laughs> Well, actually, let me read it to you. Like, what's happening? Yeah. Um, it, it, what's also interesting is this, the poster is clearly very embarrassed by the contents of these books, mm -hmm. but she's just reading out in the open in front of her parents and in front of everyone, like, all the time. Yeah. Like, she's just sitting there reading these books. It's like, man, if you're oh, so yeah. uncomfortable with it being acknowledged. To then, share with your sister, I think, is the step where it's like, okay, clearly you're uncomfortable to some degree with, like, people knowing they're reading this, but then you give it to your younger sister. Yeah. Younger children, younger siblings always are gonna be like the hey, <laughs> guess what? Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. Guess what your daughter's reading. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, you know, some things you can just enjoy yourself. Yeah. You don't have to share it. Let's yeah. be honest, the mom would probably love that book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying the daughters love it. It must be a good book. Um I like that she was also like, she's sharing it with her boyfriend. It's like, yeah. Okay. Yes. What do you, like, I'm not understanding. She's allowed to share the book with people. Yeah. Um, the verdict was asshole. <laughs> Good um, uh, someone said she's 19. She can read romance novels and talk about them if she wishes. You don't say your parents mind, only that your mother became curious. And you say your parents are aware <laughs> of what you read. You conveniently left your age out. So it seems that the only one uh, with the problem here is you. Just don't share your books so she buys her own instead of making a big deal out of it. You're the asshole. OP responded, yeah, if you knew what <laughs> haunting Adeline was about, your perspective would change because it's just immature and makes me feel uncomfortable, like I'm wrong for reading romance and I should feel ashamed about it. Uh, I mean, like, <laughs> I also like I also like how she posted on Reddit being like, am I the asshole here? And someone's like, yeah, you're the asshole for these reasons. She's like, um, if you knew that what this was happening, it's like, then you should have <laughs> written yeah. that into your post if you're yeah. trying to get an opinion. Uh, someone else said, all those books and you still haven't mastered punctuation. <laughs> this whole post is basically one long stream of consciousness. Uh, she responded, sorry, I was in the car writing on my phone. My grammar is usually a lot better. Dude, g give me a break. What? No. No. Sorry, I was driving and had to use my left foot. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm driving. I was in the car. Also, like, a passenger. Like, there's no world where that made any difference. Um, yeah, you can still go back and edit it. Like, yeah. re re review your work. Sorry, I was using a keyboard. It I just it had easier. to tell you what my sister did right I, now in I, the car I as I'm driving. Uh, the last person here said, everyone sucks here. You for making a mountain <laughs> out of a molehill. So what if your sister reads sex scenes to your parents? They're adults. Presumably if they didn't want to hear it, they'd tell the sister to stop reading. And your sister's an asshole because she sounds like she's deliberately trying to bug you. You both need to grow up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a good assessment. Fair. Yeah. I mean, uh, it sounds like if the parents haven't been like, okay, that's too much, like it's enough. It sounds like the sister might be doing it in like a funny way, where yeah. it's like actually like the bits. It landing. might actually be hilarious. You're, exactly. I didn't think about that. Because like it's like my parents have told her repeatedly to stop. Like if that's mm -hmm. something that's in there, that's very much not in there. Also, the fastest way to to like 
get someone to stop roasting you or like pranking you or whatever is to own it. And mm. if, if her sister was like, yeah, she's reading sex scenes out of this book. If you're just like, yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. It's <Book's> hot. <laughs> uh, there's a sex scene that has a gun. <laughs> you ever thought about that? So everyone good here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, like, I'm going to keep reading. And then to be done. Yeah. But she has to make it uncomfortable and she's reacting like that. Mm -hmm. Makes it worse. Especially siblings. Dude, yeah. if they know you're uncomfortable, they laser in on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Next story. Um, Amanda, you have been to Anime Expo, correct? Yes. Okay. I, I'm getting the vibe that we should ask what conventions you haven't been to. Because mm -hmm. I think you've been to most of them. I've been to a lot. What, what is the craziest convention? Ooh. That you've been to. Yeah, craziest. I don't know if this counts as a convention. Do you remember the raid on Area 51? Yes. I went to that. You were there? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I like to think of that as a convention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of like the the what the Philadelphia convention. When did the, the grand forefathers come together yeah. in order to make the Constitution? What, what actually happened there? Uh, did they just party? It was, yeah, it became Alien Stock, which was like a music festival type Love of thing. It. And then um, Storm Area 51, which was at the, uh, the like, the... Um, visitor center at the start of the extraterrestrial highway that leads into Area 51. Um, and then there was just like, yeah, crazy. I ended up going to a UFO convention after that. So that also kind of counts. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. You see any of them? The aliens? Were any of them <laughs> there? I did not. I unfortunately did not free them aliens. Unfortunately. Uh, I failed the mission. Okay. They're, they were in the group. Yeah. Uh, mm. But Anime Expo. Yes. Pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> also pretty nuts. Definitely a safety hazard. Uh, yeah, I saw uh, footage from this last one where it was so crowded you couldn't move. It was bad. Whoa. It was horrific. Yep. People love anime. Mm -hmm. Would I be the asshole for saying my girlfriend and I aren't going to Anime Expo if she has to leave Monday and I have to leave Sunday? Okay. Uh, context is required here. My girlfriend is disabled, incredibly poor eyesight, so I tend to be pretty protective. My girlfriend and I live together. We've gone to cons in our home state, Louisiana, and in nearby states a few times. This would be the furthest away. She was accepted as a performer at Anime Expo in Los Angeles. I'd love for her to perform, but her assigned spot is for Monday. I work uh, Monday to Friday, eight to five, and since until I hit the 90 day mark, which would be around 6, 11 or so, uh, I'm classified as temporary. Not el eligible for benefits, including PTO until then, and highly doubt I'd have any days off by the time Anime Expo rolls around. Now, I knew what I was getting into when I took the job, and I have been looking for alternatives with benefits from day one and a shorter or even no commute time, including remote work. But nothing has worked on that front yet, so I'm assuming I'll have this, this job at the time of Anime Expo, by which point I will be a full employee. When she brought it up today, I said I'd love to go to the con if we could make it work financially, but I can't take Monday off, and I wouldn't want her to stay in another state without me for a day. She brought up that one of her friends lives in Los Angeles and that another friend from Houston did take that day off and would be in Los Angeles for the con. I said I wouldn't even want her to stay out of state an extra day without me if it was with my best friend I've known since kindergarten. I'm generally somewhat anxious of the world and tend to plan as if the worst case scenario is likely. She said I should post here and ask, would I be the asshole for saying that my girlfriend can't stay in another state on the other side of the country for an extra day if I have to go back for work? Just to add, we've discussed other options, If, uh, like if I worked 10-hour days uh, the rest of the week to cover for the time from Monday, but that would uh, even be rough. Um, e like, if we took the Monday night flight back to Louisiana, then I'd, I'd have to be back into work by 8 a.m. Tuesday morning. It just seems that unless I could take Monday and Tuesday off, it wouldn't really be feasible. I was really planning for us to just not do Anime Expo until I had a better job with time off. Um, so he's asking would he be the asshole if he said, no, we're not doing it because you can't be at Anime Expo by yourself. I think kind of asshole. Kind of asshole. Just kind of. I don't, I don't want to go full asshole because, I mean, I don't know the history of this relationship if there have been other instances where it's like it was genuinely unsafe in a situation she was in. So she's like, I want you to come with me type of yeah. thing. Yeah. But if she's comfortable with going alone with friends, and it's not like she's going to be alone. She says, my friend's going to be there. Another friend's right. going to be there. If she's fine with it, I don't see the problem. I guess my opinion is he's allowed to express concern yeah. and mm -hmm. be like, hey, like, I, 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 are you going to be okay? Like, this is, it's a big, crazy convention by yourself. He's not, but his wording is very much like, no, you're not allowed. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. you don't get to make that decision. Yeah. She gets to choose. You can advise and be like, hey, I feel this way. But if she goes, no, I'm going to go, 
what are you going to do about yeah. it? And yeah, and it's a thing she gets to do, right? Like she's been chosen she's, to do she's something. Wearing she's wearing this. Yeah, she's chosen yeah, to perform. Yeah, then that's like that's like a great opportunity for her. Yeah, because um, I'm assuming she might be like a, a cosplayer, or cosplay designer, yeah. or something like that. So I'm I'm assuming that could be a huge deal. Um, so uh, the verdict was asshole, and there's a lot of comments here. Uh, someone said, you're the asshole, she's an adult and no doubt knows how to navigate her own disabilities. So unless you think she's not a capable or responsible adult, then I'm not sure what the issue is there. She's also an adult who booked a gig and shouldn't need your permission or you tagging along for it. You should be supporting her. If you're that protective or worried, just have her check in regularly, easy peasy. Uh, <laughs> like a normal <clears throat> abusive relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah like you know. it's... Where are you right now? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I uh, made it down the steps. Like. <laughs> good. Yeah. Uh, the poster's girlfriend posts something in the comments. Okay. Whoa. Hello, everyone. I am the girlfriend in question. I have nystagmus and am legally blind, so he helps me get around. That's the disability he mentioned. I know AX gives months notice, but the uh, email actually got filtered, so today was the first time I found out, and I am in, in a shock. I really want to do this, but I'm not sure how to convince him. I'm in the room with him in real life, and he seems pretty mad because of the comments y'all are making, so yeah. Uh, someone said, the fact that he's mad at us for giving our honest opinions to a question he asked is disturbing to me. Someone else said, if you want to stay, then stay. He has absolutely no right to keep you from doing it. You don't need his permission to do how you feel. If you think you'll have fun and your friends are enough as support, that's everything you need. She responded, it would be a bit harder uh, to go without him. Uh, I need to really save for flight and stuff because I work part time. Okay. I, don't, I don't like this I don't vibe like, on I this. don't like that she went. She felt like she had to go to the comments when she's in the room with her boyfriend versus talking with him because that does not The weirdest way they're communicating. I mean, even in the first place, it's like, hey, you should maybe post on Am I the Asshole and get the internet's opinion. She, like, yeah. told him to do that in the first place, yeah. and then she's in the comments like, I think you're correct. This is the weirdest communication style I think I've ever heard of. Yeah. I don't obviously know the full details of her disability, but if she has friends who can support her, it doesn't sound like it's an impossible thing. Yeah, and either. going and going to the comments for me, it's kind of like, okay, you ask, your, I hey, to ask your mom if I can go to Anime Expo with you. Like that's right. kind of what it's giving a right. little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, can you guys tell my boyfriend I can go to Anime Expo, please? Like that's a little bit what it's coming across as it, from yeah. that comment. And I just, I don't know, I'm not digging. I don't like it. How uh, it's coming across. Look on uh, on almost every single one of these episodes, we. There's a controlling boyfriend story. Yeah, I'm, yeah. and every single that's one. Yeah. Just giving like, me I don't a little want to say that, that, but also it's like, and then the fact where it's like, okay, he's not going to go at all now, so now I might have to figure out how to like budget to get yeah. there as well. It's just that's, very much like, it's a weird dynamic. I'm I like, don't know. I understand yeah. the the concern, and this is me going for it. So mm -hmm. obviously, like, look, I'm gonna go for it hard. Let's go for it hard. <laughs> I feel like he's feigning concern for her safety, like completely. Yeah. And I feel like if you were in again, maybe they've only been dating for a short term. So, but that comment is completely correct. She's lived this way her whole life. She yeah. knows how to navigate her disability. And if she thinks her friends can help her, or she can, you know, navigate the world to this, where she feels safe with them, like, what what is it for you? Like, do you think like I just don't know. Like, are you uncomfortable with her being with people, not when you're around? Like, what? It's, it and it's feels also, controlling it's, and weird. Anime Expo and conventions, because I've been to, like, Comic-Con and stuff, they they are crazy. And they, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to, they're not dangerous, but, like, mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. But if you're with a friend who's going to be there and knows the situation, there's nothing to, I don't feel like there's anything to really worry about. Especially if she, it sounds like she got chosen for something, so she would already have like a speaker or a guest pass, which right. would already give you like, it's basically like a feature creator at VidCon. It's like yeah. backstage access, the safer out access. Same with the ADA uh, um, access that she would probably have as well. Mm -hmm. So like, she's gonna have like, it's gonna be a, if it's gonna be safe for anyone, it would be safe for her. Basically. Right, exactly. All right, next story. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's no tie, there's no convention okay. tie in for this. <laughs> that you know. <laughs> that we know of. Maybe you're an expert in something here, but uh, this, <laughs> apparently the story is just nuts. There's just a little note that's just like, the story is insane. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, this comes from Relationship Advice, and it was reposted onto Am I the Devil? Ooh. Which is where the best ones go. How should I, a 34 year old man, tell my Muslim co worker, a 29 year old woman, that I was behind her divorce. I'm sorry. What? 
I'm going to go with asshole or devil. <laughs> yes. What, what, is, what is the answer? asshole. <laughs> is this Ursula? Who is this? Like, what? <laughs> Demon. Throw away account for obvious reasons. I'm an asshole. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I work in New York City for a financial firm. My colleague is a Muslim woman who works in the same department. It all started about a year ago. She joined our firm as a financial analyst. She is Asian. Also, it was her first time working in New York City. I really need these things to be relevant. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 you, yeah. yeah. Really, yeah. Whenever yeah. people say those things, I really oh need God. this stuff to be relevant at this point mm -hmm. because it's starting to feel weird. Um, I initially had no feelings for her. For the most part, she and I would talk regarding work, chat for a bit, small talk, and go about our day. Two months after she joined, our team came to know about her birthday, which is how I know her age. And we all celebrated it in a cafe. Uh, if you know, you know. It has in parenthesis. Someone needs to Google I don't like know. New York I, This guy's not even yeah. just an asshole. This guy's just weird. Is Can he we speaking like, in code? What's going on? It, it Maybe. Uh, it was her birthday that I realized that I am falling for her. Oh, God. <laughs> She is genuinely the most calmest and innocent person I've ever come across. Her birthday speech made me realize that people have so many struggles and yet overcome those to be able to make a name for themselves. Anyway, the next day, she brought us all some Asian food she cooked as a gratitude. It was food for like 10 to 15 people, and I couldn't fathom she cooked for those many people. That's how he's typing, right? Mm -hmm. um, just... I'm still hung up on how he called her innocent, and that was one of the things that attracted her. <laughs> oh, I, I couldn't. Uh, calm and innocent. I'm like, dude, are you like, whoa. <laughs> I asked her how she managed to cook for such a large group, which is when she said her husband helped her. Never in my life was I as heartbroken as I was that day. I don't know why I couldn't control my anger and tears. Just abruptly left the conversation and went back to my desk. I started digging into her personal life, got to know about her husband, who also works in another financial firm. I had a friend working in the same company as her husband. Day by day, I went miserable. I didn't know what to do. Uh, so I made up a story about her having an affair with me so the husband would leave her. I asked my friend to say this. My friend had no idea I was lying. He thought I was speaking the truth. My friend told her husband about our affair. Obviously, he flipped. Next day, she came to work calmly again. She walked up to my desk. I was shitting bricks, by the way. She said someone is bad-mouthing us, asked me to be careful, and apologized for my name being dragged with her name. I literally felt like a shit person. She didn't even for a second think that I was behind all this. I controlled my feelings for her. I kept seeing every single day, but I felt like shit for doing that to her. After about eight months, she invited us all for dinner at a restaurant. She was moving to Big Four. Uh, one of my coworkers asked why her husband wasn't present. She said they had been separated for six months. There was so much sadness in that answer, but she just handled it and enjoyed the dinner with us. Later, her best friend at work told me upon asking 1,000 times that her husband left her after knowing about some affair she had. I feel like shit, and you all can abuse me, but I want to genuinely help and make things right. I don't know where to start or what to do, but I love her. I know this for sure. A part of me wants her, to, her divorce to happen so I can propose to her and marry her but also I have never felt this miserable about myself I don't know what I was hoping to achieve by all this but I feel miserable should I tell her the truth there was no reason you can walk into traffic that's what you can do yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the, the only option you write a letter admitting uh, yes it hi, I then... did this I'm so sorry here give this to your boyfriend I will date it and time it and take a photo with the newspaper and give it to your, your, your husband oh my god there was no Reason control, for I, him to say she was Muslim or Asian. It had no, <laughs> dude, bearing on the your okay, story. You <laughs> it had no bearing oh on the story. Oh I was waiting God. to be like, what's the purpose of adding that stuff? He's like, I love her so much. That's why I know so much about her. She's Asian. <laughs> she I love her. Asian She's so too. calm and innocent and Asian. Uh. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, dude. God. I like how he ruins her marriage and then is like, I controlled my feelings for her. Yeah, I continue no, to say that. This guy is a nightmare. Oh god. Oh, oh my god. I feel like I feel like um nothing about this is redeeming, but I feel like at the end of this post, it was like the end of Shutter Island <laughs> when he realizes that like he's crazy and like he's got a fake gun the whole time. Yeah. Like he's like, oh my god, do I need to like be put away somewhere? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. God. We're all here, and she's like, she's her. Uh, she's actually his psychiatrist. Yes, and yes. He's just like, what's happening? Oh my god. Like he, she's definitely in a group chat. like this weird guy at my work just like stares at me all the time, and mm -hmm. like he keeps talking to me and like asking for food and stuff and then also now there's a rumor that like we slept together I would never sleep with him like that's in a group chat somewhere yeah, yeah. Um, the dude. fact that she didn't even consider that it was him 
I mean, that's. I know. I'm kind of shocked that it's like everyone isn't just like, oh, well, it's that guy. And he's over yeah. the corner. He's like, he's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> me? Yeah. You think it was me? <laughs> There's some speculation in the comments on the uh, the part where he's like, if you know, you know. They're like, it's probably just a regular bar. Muslims are forbidden from drinking alcohol by their religion, so despite being clearly the son of Iblis himself, the OP apparently has enough decency not to say outright that a Muslim he knows frequented a place in which alcohol was served. Okay. Got it. So he was saying, oh, we went to a cafe. If Uh, there was a bar, he's trying to, it's the very (laughs) smallest amount of respect he showed this person, despite destroying her life. Yeah. like, I can't. And her happiness and her marriage. And and, literally yeah. just ruining everything. Yeah. Um, someone said, what the f***? You're a horrible person. The only way is to let both of them know what you've done. You have to find a new job and get the hell out of their lives. The problem now is uh, if he tells anyone this. You won't find his Someone body. might try to kill him. You won't find <laughs> his body, yeah. No, yeah, he's a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. He knows it, too. Yeah. He kind of knows it. I think he doesn't realize how bad this is. He's like, ah, oh, should I tell her? Should I tell her I lied and said that we were having an affair? And the sem- I'm caught up on the semantics of this because I'm annoying. Um, so, like, so he, he told his friend, yeah, I slept with her, or like, we I don't think he up. told anyone. No, no, no. He told the friend. He told the friend oh. that told the husband. He told the friend the lie. And then, said, then she yeah. came. You, someone speaking, talking negatively about it was watch your back to him. So like, the husband knew the name. No one came to talk to him directly. Yeah, I guess. Because uh, he's getting out of this unscathed that he has this alleged affair. She's aware. She knows it's a lie. Yeah. And he knows that it's but a lie. But he went to the husband and said she's sleeping with this coworker because she knew to go to him directly. That's, but that's why she is such an. No, 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 I yeah. know. But like, if this is the alleged affair that she knows is not true, mm-hmm. but like the husband obviously believes to some degree, or at least that she's having an affair. Uh-huh. Like yeah. he's getting out of this unscathed he so really, far. He really is avoiding this. Yeah. yeah. This is like one Which of the- Which is why he is the devil. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And now I see your point. Yes, yes. yes. He is absolutely the devil. No. It's as yes. if he was born this way. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't believe humans are born evil. <laughs> no. So this person is not human, they are yes, the, devil. the devil. Yeah, someone said there's a special <laughs> level of hell for people like you. Uh, someone else said, she'd never give you a chance anyway because then it would mean the rumors were true. Do the right thing and tell her husband, your friend, and her. You can do it anonymously, but the karma that will follow you from not doing the right thing isn't worth it, if this story is true at all. That's uh, that's the only hopeful thing, is that this story is just a complete lie, and this guy is just... But it's a throwaway account. So he's not even doing it for karma on Reddit. I mean, he's yeah. like in the New York financial space. I mean, all I'm saying is that's already like, yeah, probably like 15% of you are like straight up incapable of understanding feelings. <laughs> probably. <laughs> like probably. Like Damn. Okay, probably. I don't know. Damn. I mean, we could pull actors. Your credit so score I'm not sure. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can't go lower, I don't think. <laughs> I think it's scary. It's scary when people like think like, oh, I love this person. It's like, yeah. I need you to define love for me, like oh, it's when you, you watch like, someone and think they're calm and innocent. Oh God, stop! <laughs> Isn't that what it is from afar? <laughs> you watch God. them really? and you find those traits. She made food for everyone, so she would definitely cook for me all the time. Mm-hmm. Like that's what he's thinking. Oh it's, my God, yeah, ew! <laughs> it, it's it is absolutely scary how much he objectified her throughout this whole thing. Yeah. Like, he wrote himself her... like the big big bad wolf. Like literally, that's oh so my God, weird. that's what he yeah. did. Yeah, like does he not understand the traits that he's? describing of himself as he's trying to like make this not as bad as it is. Like he's even trying to clean it up a little, you know? Not even that, he's like, hey, I just want them to get divorced so I can propose. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right, he's not even cleaning that up. So I can propose and marry her. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. He was like, he was just observing her. Like he, and then she gave a speech at her birthday thing and he's just like, I love you. (laughs) And then, but then it's like, oh, but you have a husband because you're a person. And then he was just like, no, she can't have a husband. Dude, she's so good at her job. Like, her and her husband come from another country to just come here and just, like, kick ass, and you're here just going to destroy their entire yeah. existence? Like, you are... I'm confused. Did he give ages? Because I, I feel like I know, but, like... Uh, she's 29. And he's... He's 34. Oh, he's okay. a ghoul. That's a ghoul human. That's this not, is not that's a person. Not, like, I expected way worse, frankly. 34-year-olds? <laughs> I, expected, 34? I expected way worse, frankly. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, hopefully... Bad things happen to him. Yeah, I, I no, yeah. like, like what there is. I just hope she finds out. I hope her. everyone finds out. I just, yeah, I just want everyone to find out and be like, oh, you're crazy. 
Yeah, what? like Shelly in the office is like, oh my god, I was on Reddit, and like I think Martin wrote about you. Like I yeah. think that's what needs Seriously, to happen. And that's what I was about to say. Yeah. If I was in charge, you know, I'm like in the, yeah. the gate. Do you get it? No, you posted it on a throwaway account. So actually, yeah, you're still going to hell. <laughs> even if you did everything right, you mm-hmm. couldn't even be. You had to be anonymous about it. Yeah. So like, see. even if they found it, like, there's no confirmation. This is yeah. from. This is. This was posted recently. So if people. Like, this is from this month. So if people know these people or you, you have a hunch, someone out there be a good detective. Call 1-800-SMOSH. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And tell us what you know. Um, <laughs> all right. Go to the cafe and find this <laughs> yes. guy. This episode is brought to you by Factor. The busy fall season is back in swing, and uh, Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, is here to help you have chef-prepared, dietitian approved meals, Uh, that will fit in with your busy schedule. Uh, They're ready to go in two minutes and they're delivered straight to your door. And they come in so many different kinds of options. So they have the Gourmet Plus, which has premium ingredients like truffle butter, asparagus, broccolini, so good. They have Protein Plus, which has 30 grams of protein per meal. And they have the Calorie Smart, which has around 550 calories or less per meal. So there's an option for everyone. And they're so convenient, so easy. And you feel great, they're healthy, they'll keep you on track with your healthy lifestyle. And my favorite thing about Factor is that they are very sustainable. They offset 100% of their emissions from delivery, they use 100% renewable energies for their offices and production, and all of their seafood and all their meals are 100% sustainably sourced. They're, They're good. Head to factormeals.com slash pitreddit50 and use code pitreddit50 to get 50% off. That's code pitreddit50 at factormeals.com slash pitreddit50 to get 50% off. It's a great deal. Check it out. Back to the show. This one's an older story, but I think it's going to be good because I believe furries are involved. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> what awesome timing. Uh, this comes from uh, a subreddit called Tales of the Convention. Mm, I uh, see. The tales with an I? Uh, no. Oh. oh. Well, they're not clever. Well, I think there it's all a- types of conventions. Oh, I but- thought this was just the furry convention story. Oh. Okay. No, the title of the story is called Unexpected Guard Dog. Oh. oh. <laughs> I don't want to Google that. <laughs> uh... Someone suggested I put this story here, so here you go. Cheers. This happened to me at an Otakon, the anime convention on the East Coast in the USA. Uh, at this point in time, I'd say I was a 15-year-old girl standing at a whopping five foot five inches tall. I was slim, but other than that, fairly unattractive and not too noticeable. Me, being the nerd that I am, was really excited to attend my first anime convention. My friend had told me that yes, there was the occasional creeper, but other than that, everything was relatively fine because we are all a bunch of nerds in costumes trying to have fun like it's a three-day Halloween party. Sounds like a blast, right? I put together a nicely homemade cosplay and am ready to face the world. Uh, Aya Shimemaru from Toho. You're doing great. We need Erica in here. <laughs> You're doing great. Um, I, I don't recognize this anime. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. But uh, now I'm not a very social person, even around my friends, so they let me wander the convention center alone to go people watching and whatnot. Second day, some dude comes up and wants my picture. He doesn't have any kind of costume on, but is wearing some anime shirt. I agree and pose because a bunch of people have been asking for my picture. Then he asked me a bunch of questions as if, uh, if, as if I were actually Aya, the, the character she's cosplaying as. I knew a lot of people did role play as their characters, so I decided to play along with that as well. After the conversation was over, I decided to look back at the wares in the dealer's room. Guess who was there? Fanboy. Now, this guy was a little taller than me, and I could tell that he was older, probably at least in his 20s or so. Dude starts chatting me up again and shouts, I love Toho, or I love the, the show, since we were standing right next to the table for it. Uh, He just seemed like a really eccentric fan to me, so I just thought that he was weird and didn't mean any harm. Now he starts talking to me about how he loves Aya, calling her his waifu, and how I apparently look similar to how he imagines her in his head. This is where I started to get a bit concerned. I excuse myself and leave, but he follows me around and keeps asking me in-character questions. I looked around for a security person, but surprisingly, I didn't really see one outside of the, the man by the doors coming in, and we were on the other side of the room. So I keep wandering around trying to lose this dude because I don't know, I didn't actually think to go through with uh, with alerting security because this wasn't really an emergency. 
It is. Um, uh, <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. I wanted to contact one of my friends, but I also didn't want to worry them or rope them into this stuff. Like I said, I was 15 and more book smart than street smart. The dude keeps following me around and continues on with his questions. Eventually, I managed to lose him and decide to get some overpriced lunch inside the convention center because I'm not going in that shitty summer heat. I sit down at one of the tables and just think to myself, oh no, as I see the guy again in the distance ordering something. Now, that was probably the first time I've ever purposefully avoided someone. I pick up my sandwich and left. I didn't think he noticed me. That was my first mistake. The guy catches me in the halls and starts talking about the usual Aya-related stuff. I try giving him the cold shoulder, but it doesn't work very well, seeing as he's oblivious and very persistent. Then he starts talking about how cute I am and going off on the whole waifu thing. Now at this point, I was pretty creeped out and asked him to stop. He seemed very confused and acted like he didn't know what he did wrong, and everything went back to the way it was 10 seconds ago. Now at this point, he had followed me into the artist alley, and I was probably visibly uncomfortable. I'm practically backing away from this dude, and I politely try to tell him to go away. Then I see some guy in a fur suit walk, walk up to us. Now I'm sitting there thinking, oh God, please no, because I immediately assume it's one of the, one of the dude's friends, as I've noticed he'd been watching us for a few minutes at least. The first thing that comes out of uh, this giant blue dog's mouth is an irritated, hey buddy, I'm gonna need you to back off my friend. I didn't know anyone who owned a fursuit, but I have never in my life been so relieved to see an impossibly colored anthropomorphic dog. Now this dog guy is extremely tall, dwarfing me and being big enough to intimidate the fanboy. He doesn't want to leave, leave though, making up some crap excuse about how he's just having fun or something. Then another fur, fursuiter comes up and stands next to the blue dog guy, and they're also pretty big, and there's like two more in the background looking over at us. It's at this point that the, the weeb... Pack. It's at this point that the weeb knows where, when to leave and reluctantly slinks away, looking back at us every so often. Since the furry crew was looking around at the vendor's wares like I was, they decided to stick around with me for a bit to help ward off the creeper. Well, it worked. I never saw the dude again. Uh, wow. So it wasn't, she didn't know these people. Some, some furries just came to her rescue. Damn. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That Not is, the whole thing. The whole no. thing is horrible. Especially, I just kept thinking, oh, God, she's 15. Like, cause that's how you started the story. I was yeah. like, oh, God. I like if this guy was, like, he he believes she's he's treating her like the the actual character. So when these these furries come up, he's like, oh, my God, a giant dog. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, no, it's Clifford. And oh, Bill, oh, and Rassy, <laughs> and Blue. Oh, no. Oh, God, they can talk. <laughs> Scooby. <laughs> Scooby. <laughs> Um, Scrappy's going for the angle. Yeah, Snoopy <laughs> shitting on his face. That's <laughs> how obviously this guy must have been creeping on her that through the fur suits, they're like, oh, that guy's being a creep. Yeah. They can smell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. My fursona it has keen smell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pedo senses were tingling. <laughs> oh. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, oh, that's God. pretty rough. Um, <laughs> You did not mean to do that. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I would say, like I said before about conventions, I'm like, oh, they feel pretty safe. I still would never really go around by myself. So that's what I do, is I go everywhere alone. <laughs> okay. So when you said she was 15, I immediately was like, oh, God. Because, like, even as I'm 25, which I know in internet years is ancient for some reason, um, but like without fail, every event I go to, when someone clocks I'm alone, I deal with at least one old dude that's following me around every single time. But like a 15 year old doesn't know better. And again, this is her first convention. She doesn't know if like, oh, is this just what I have to deal with? If I want to go and have fun in costume and character. And she said, so like, I oh, have people have been asking me for photos. So she thinks she's just entertaining like someone having fun and asking for a photo. I'm like, oh yeah, someone likes my cosplay. Yeah. And unfortunately this guy is just a creep. Yeah. Yeah, it, it honestly wasn't until I was dating my girlfriend and just like she told me stories of just like her experience like just as a woman and like how unfortunate it is the amount of harassment that she would get from literally age five until now from anyone that's similar age to creepy old men whether it's in the car and they're making weird faces or comments and it's like that's someone's dad that's someone's grandpa like this guy obviously doesn't have any friends but yeah. some people's friends are really creepy and like it's on you as the friend to like you need to step into that situation because like Yo, she's 15 and she's afraid. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it just freaks me out to think that people behave that way. And like, that person goes to a job. That person goes somewhere. Like, that person has family. Like, there, there are people that need to get involved before this person rightfully goes to prison 
for messaging someone or like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just what it is, but like, that's just so scary. And I'm a, I'm sorry on behalf of the <laughs> world for the existence that this 15 year old has to grow up in, you, anyone, I mean, guys, anyone at all. It's just, harassment is not yeah. fair. Yeah. It really sucks. Yeah, but on the note of what you mentioned of like conventions being safe, her mentioning like security, I couldn't find anyone. Unfortunately, that I have never been to this convention, but Anime Expo, that was the issue was they were all outside dealing with the lines outside. They weren't often on the floor that were identifiable. So wow. like, unfortunately that is an issue in these events. What would you think is a solution? Now, obviously, like, you know, it, mm -hmm. anime conventions, at least in LA, like a lot of them happen in Anaheim. Like mm -hmm. it's a, it's either Disney or the conventions that Loki yeah. like make politics locally. Mm -hmm. Just on your opinion, what, like, are there limits to the number of people? Do you need a ratio of, you know, security to, to participants? Do you have mm -hmm. to limit the number of tickets sold? Like Overall, the capacity issue with Anime Expo was a capacity issue. They oversold first day entirely and they've oversold for the last, five years that it's been running essentially and it's just gotten worse each day because they just only sell, you can do a one day ticket and pick which day you, you want to go to. So obviously everyone wants to go to the first day because that's when the most free stuff is around, that's when the most people are there, things like that. So they need to cap that for one. But also what happens with a lot of conventions is they hire security day of or like the few days before. So like to communicate to security, hey, this is what's happening in these areas, these are the hot spots. this is where you need to be. There's not enough time to do that. And so it's kind of a, it's just something that needs to happen from like the, the planning aspect, the security aspect, all of it. There just needs to be more foresight into the security of these events. Yeah. I feel like there's gotta be some uh, space of like, I'm a convention designer. I will help you flow human traffic around mm -hmm. where you need to go. Cause at least over the years of VidCon and obviously tickets sold varied, the pandemic varied, but the most recent year I thought was where I saw the least number uh, of like traffic jams of humans. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that was. There was but less people. Yeah, that, there you go, there you go. <laughs> less tickets sold. Yeah, damn. <laughs> uh, some comments here. Uh, over the years, the furry community has developed various social norms and one of them is a no tolerance policy about creepers. Someone said, a, they said example, two fur cons ago, there was someone in a Left for Dead hunter costume running around screaming and jumping on people. He got hunted down and booted fast. <laughs> Literally hunted, yeah. <laughs> Literally hunted by lions. Um, <laughs> someone else said, I feel sad and annoyed about the bad rep they have. The more I read about furries, the more I like the community. A bit surprised they broke character to speak aloud to the dude, but a creeper is no joke. Uh, someone responded, um, furries can be pretty awesome people. I've had some pretty awesome times at some of the furry bars at Burning Man over the years. At Burning Man? Yeah, that sounds hot. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, someone said, the furry bars at Burning Man is not a phrase I really expected to hear in my life. <laughs> what? Okay, that's- Smosh trip to Burning Man. I actually, I, I have no problem with, with, with furries. I think I'm someone who hates costumes and I, I guess I, res I respect them, but I also, I think furries, the only reason I think furries are crazy is because I'm like, you have to be so hot mm -hmm. in there. That's the only thing that I'm just like, dude, how do you tolerate that? Mm -hmm. uh, but respect. Yeah. I got respect for him though, because I'm like, I, c I would pass out. Mm -hmm. Interesting fitness routine. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, those things are crazy. I've seen videos like of massive. furries dancing. Yeah, oh and yeah. I'm like, Did you see the fight footage that just came out? No. There was Two a, furries fought? No, they oh. fought a protester who was like yelling slurs and stuff. At wow. Them, and a furry attacked the guy with a megaphone and just kept going after him. And then he started like crying to the police like, furries are horrible, as he's like whining. It's Whoa. like, dude, you lost, be done. The police are yeah. like, we can't arrest that bear. <laughs> <laughs> the bears are you not need under to legal the jurisdiction. Service, <laughs> Sorry, you need to get a park ranger here. We can't <laughs> deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my god. No, I've actually I have continuously heard about furries getting a bad rep and that they're typically as a community overall pretty chill. I mean all communities have assholes in them, yeah. right? Every community because it's just you get a group of people, you have a collection and there's going to be an asshole there. But overall as a community I've heard they're pretty chill. Yeah. Um uh, lastly, someone said, that was extremely sweet of them and I'm glad you didn't experience anything worse. It's too easy to forget that cosplayers, especially cosplayers that are in character and in really good costumes, are just people. I can only shake my head at my teenage years of following cosplayers around conventions. Okay. I'm not too well versed in like that type of stuff. I've gone to cons and I, I just look, I'll be like, wa people watching, I'm like, that's cool, but I... I love like TV shows, I love anime, but I, my fandom kind of stops at the show. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I never am like, oh my gosh, I want to go and like you express this. You just haven't found somewhere. your show yet. 
that you're I guess like, I not. need to be this character. <laughs> Unless they have the, a convention for the bear on FX, uh, where you just go and you just cook somewhere and you just yell, <laughs> cousin! Uh, then maybe, maybe then, but no. Um, have, have you been to Burning Man? Not yet. Ooh. Oh, I know. That's, that's gonna be an I upcoming know. one. Dude. It's like a whole thing though, because you have to, everything know. you bring in, you have to bring out. It's like a whole camping thing, but I was a Girl Scout for 12 years, a fun lore thing. Which is um, Burning Man. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably some badges you could get there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Our next story I'm stoked for because uh, it comes from Am I the Asshole? Am I the Asshole for leaving my surprise wedding because I felt blindsided? No. That's good. Yeah, immediately <laughs> That's I'm worst like, case what a scenario. setup. That sounds awful, frankly. Okay. Last week, I, a 30 year old woman, was invited to a supposedly fancy party by my longtime boyfriend, Mark, who's 32. We had been dating for five years, and while we had discussed marriage before, there were no immediate plans for a wedding. Excited about the event, I dressed up in my best attire and arrived at the designated venue. As I entered the grand hall, I was completely taken aback to see all of our family, friends, and acquaintances gathered eagerly waiting. It turns out, Mark had orchestrated an elaborate surprise wedding for us without my knowledge. Everyone erupted into applause as I stood there, shocked and overwhelmed. I just felt a mix of emotions. While I love Mark and had dreamed of our future together, the idea of getting married without any prior discussion or consent felt like a breach of trust. Really? You don't say. Strange. <laughs> I mean, they ask you if you do. <laughs> They're about to ask. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get to that I part. I like that you think that she's gonna get that part yeah. down the aisle to get asked the question. <laughs> yeah. So I pulled Mark aside and tried to express my concerns and reservations about the surprise wedding. I explained that I wanted a say in the planning process, to be part of the decision making and to have the chance to prepare <laughs> mentally and emotionally for such a significant milestone in our lives. However, Mark dismissed my concerns, saying that he thought it would be a romantic gesture and that I would be thrilled. In that moment, I faced a difficult choice. Go along with the surprise wedding, putting on a smile despite feeling unsettled, or stand up for my autonomy and voice my true feelings. I ultimately made the decision not to proceed with the, the surprise wedding, much to the disappointment and confusion of our guests. Now I find myself at odds with Mark, our families, and even some of our friends who believe I overreacted and spoiled a beautiful moment. However, I firmly believe that a marriage should be a joint decision with open communication and shared expectations. Everyone's excuse for this is I have always talked about marrying Mark. And again, the problem isn't marrying him. The problem is not having any say in my wedding. Mark thought I'd appreciate it because I always spoke about how stressful planning a wedding must be. Yes, I think it's stressful, it is, but I'd still like to try planning one. After this whole ordeal, everyone asked if Mark and I were ending things, in which I replied, no. I emphasized to them that Mark and I, uh, that I still wanted to marry him, and most feel like this is making me more of an asshole since I just wasted a perfectly fine wedding. So, am I the asshole for refusing to attend my own surprise wedding, even though it was intended as a, rom a romantic gesture? Um, there's an edit here. I previously omitted this from my post because of the subreddit's word count guidelines. I love surprises. It's a thing everyone has known me to f known that I love. Uh, Mark knew that. The fact I wanted to marry him and said wedding planning was stressful thought a surprise wedding would be perfect. A surprise engagement is bland because it will always be a surprise but not a wedding, lol. He threw this wedding for the surprise but explained how in a couple days we could do a courthouse wedding to make it legal. This was his only way to surprise me. I love spontaneity but legal marriage or not, I wanted a say in my wedding to choose the perfect date to choose my bridesmaids to pick out my cake. Again, due to these uh, thoughts, everyone thinks I'm the asshole because I could have gone along with the party and do a redo legal wedding. But again, I felt blindsided and confused, so I left. You're not the asshole. Um, fake your death, change your name, have a fun new life. I think that's <laughs> the way you do it. Uh, yeah. Throw the whole friend group and family out. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Honestly, by the way it was written, I thought it was going to be signed like Elliot Senor 1864. I was like, dude, like, what is oh happening? Oh my God, like one. Okay, the friends not telling you and all that, like, oh yeah, this will be fun. Like, a fun little surprise. Like, what did he tell them to be right. like, yeah, what did he tell, tell them? Don't tell her you guys are coming to her wedding, because they all seemed to think it was a wedding that they were going to. Yeah, she thought it was like a fancy dinner. But did they all think it was a wedding? Yes, right? they, no. everyone knew it was a wedding. Okay, see, I would trust right? no one. No, it would be I, like, I'd they, be they the don't, guy on jury duty. Well, I, I'm trusting no one. Else. They don't specifically <laughs> say, but eventually they all learned no, that No, they know it's a wedding. 
Yeah. She's the only one who doesn't know it's a wedding. Which is why everyone thinks she's the asshole. But I don't know yeah. if they know it's a surprise wedding. No, they know. Who goes they to know. a wedding they and they, they, they eventually they knew. No, know. They, they so know. So do they no. all turn around and we're like, ta-da! Yeah. Yeah, I think so. See, okay. What? The but way- she says, oh, everyone knows that I love surprises. And everyone knows that I've been saying I'm Surprise is free dessert at the end of dinner. It's not, <laughs> hey, by the way, here's your legal Whoa, and, okay. and Whoa. Your, your, the whole, your whole rest of your life is now married to this one person. That's not a fun surprise yeah. spontaneity thing. And also a wedding is like, that's a one of the critical moments of your life that's like yeah. a big event and people care about making it special. Also like wedding photos and all that shit that's gonna last forever, and you're just showing up, and you're like, oh, oh, this is happening. <laughs> yeah. What other surprises does this guy ha- have planned? He's like, look, I know you've wanted to get Botox for a while. I know you've talked about your nose, so <laughs> you're gonna go under, and you're gonna come out with new boobs. Knows? With new boobs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't know what you're right. getting. Okay, babe. <laughs> you got those wisdom teeth out, but also, <laughs> yeah, look, turn around. around. <laughs> <laughs> you put them in my ass. <laughs> My butt hole has teeth! <laughs> <laughs> that was not the yes and I was expecting! <laughs> okay, here's some comments. Ooh. Get the hell out of that relationship. Not the asshole 100%. Someone else said, you know Mark's an asshole when he takes his moves right out of Gaston's playbook. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my God. Uh, Someone else said, not the asshole. I admire you, OP, for saying no and not just going along with it. You did the right thing. Putting someone in a position that makes them feel guilty or embarrassed to say no is not a romantic thing to do at all. It's emotionally manipulative. If he is apologetic and wants to plan a wedding together, then you have yourself a great guy. If he gets all weird and or angry about it, you dodged a bullet. One way or the other, things will work out the way they're supposed to. Ugh. Mm Well, there's an update. Yeah. Oh. 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 I was like, I had like a here's how you can do a surprise thing. Never mind. Let's hear the update. Yeah, the update. Is he a buffoon or is he an asshole? Wait, do you believe there's a way to do a surprise wedding? Not a surprise. Okay, so if she wants money, hey, we've talked about getting married, that type of thing, then you do like the proposal and then by the way, if you want, there is an officiant outside. I have this little thing set up for like the two of you. Yeah. Like something small yeah. and fun. Maybe you tell the parents, like maybe that's it. Something small that gives you the, but then you're not That'd doing the That'd be so yes sweet. There. Like the parents are there yeah. just in case. Yeah. yeah. That seems like a great surprise. Yeah. That's romantic. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Like the, the, it's but it's gotta, gotta be low pressure. Into a wedding. Super it's gotta low be pressure. like, hey, here's a surprise, but I want yeah. you to yeah. know this is Small and like yeah. you can say no. That's why you do it like. But the problem, this dinner, was put yeah. on like you can't say no. This is a spectacle, and you're gonna be forced to make yes. that choice. Yeah. Another fun surprise is if if she could be in on a surprise for other people where they're like, come to our engagement party, mm-hmm. and then it's actually a. Oh, yeah. like if he loved her, he'd have her join in on things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that makes sense. Her yeah. Uh-huh. And it's like yeah, her opinion on uh-huh. things. Yeah. Good point. And it's like I'm sorry, weddings aren't cheap. Where did the money come from? Is this our shared finances? What's happening here? <laughs> surprise! Your savings are gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> surprise! I. Forged your handwriting. And- <laughs> oh, fuck. Here's the update. Woo. Oh, God, where is this going to go? All right. We have three kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That I've never seen before. <laughs> yes, <surprise. laughs> I want to start off by thanking everyone for <laughs> Sorry, just stop thinking about the teeth in the bubble. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right. <laughs> I want to start off by thanking everyone for the responses I got and the advice. However, I would like to reiterate that Mark is a great person who did a stupid thing. If you knew me, though, a surprise wedding seems like something I would love. Unfortunately, I didn't. After talking to Mark, we both got to the conclusion that we didn't do anything wrong. Both of us are valid in our opinions, and the situation was an odd one. Unfortunately, Mark spent a lot of money on planning this wedding, as well as family members. He doesn't think that we have the funds to plan another wedding until a couple years. I will be honest, that choice is really messing with me. I'd like to be married sometime soon and start out a life uh, as a family. I know weddings don't have to be extravagant. We could always throw a small party and once we have enough money, do a second one. But I don't know if that's what I want. I honestly feel selfish and regret not using the surprise wedding. I feel like I wasted a bunch of money. I used to stand by my choice confidently, but now I'm not sure I made the right choice and all this stress is wearing me down. Anyway, I'm staying with Mark, probably will get married soon and have my dream wedding in the near future, hopefully. Again, thanks to all the responses and I hope people from Am I the Asshole also see this post. You did nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you no, reacted dude. in the moment. Um, and I also, you wasted no money. He wasted the money. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> like, yeah. It's it just like, sounds like he got his parents involved, maybe their parents involved. 
Like, it seems like he might have borrowed other people's money, too. Like, Which is, again, bad, bad and Surprise. on him, though. Oh, totally on him still, yeah, yeah. definitely. Surprise, the mafia are after us. <laughs> Turn around, I took Surprise. your kneecaps. <laughs> Turn around, I took your kneecaps. <laughs> oh, the kidney was gone the whole yeah. time. <laughs> uh, there's, there's one comment on that. Uh, Personally, the fact that he blew all the wedding money on a surprise without any consultation or care at all to what you actually wanted, then blew you off when you tried to express your very genuine concern is still raising red flags for me. Not gonna say it has to be a deal breaker, I don't know him, but the general lack of concern or care towards your wants and needs and a willingness to spend large amounts of savings on something for you that you absolutely did not want at all, then trying to pressure you into it because he backed you into a corner is to me still very much cause for concern, but I recognize that I've only seen a tiny piece of this puzzle and I wish you the best. Uh, I'm happy that person added that at the end of the comment because like obviously that's yeah. you know everyone's first jump to opinion and like generally what we're all thinking but also at the end of it we do only have one piece of the puzzle. Like he might be a great guy he just might be real dumb. Yeah the thing about she mentioned in the other or at the start of this edit or whatever it was uh, she mentioned like this does seem like something I would be interested in which is why he thought to do it. What have they done or what does she express interest in that would warrant like be on the same level as like surprise wedding? Yeah. Yeah, I, she thought she was taking a flight to Hawaii. Surprise, we're skydiving. Oh, God. <laughs> That's that one. Surprise, we're poor. <laughs> Surprise, we have no money left. Yeah. Here's our last story. Am I the asshole for telling members of my cooking class not to eat bad food? Okay. Um, this also ended up on Am I the Devil? Oh, oh. my God. What does this mean? <laughs> so, okay. Is it poisoned? Yeah. Is it rotten? What's uh, happening? Throwaway account, so you know it's gonna be good. Whenever it's a throwaway account, that's that's the best stuff. Oh man. God. I, a 46-year-old man, am taking a cooking class. It's an adult education class for beginner cooks and focuses on knife skills and basic cooking principles. I've been cooking my whole life and came from a family that cooked a lot, but I never learned the proper gourmet techniques. Most of the people in my class only cook occasionally. There is one young woman, 20s, question mark, who says she barely cooks at all. During the first class, we were asked to state our skill level and what we hope to get out of the class. And she said, my family never cooked and I always thought cooking was a stressful activity and I wanna make it a fun activity. Great, but that's not what everyone else is here for. The first day, I noticed that this what? girl had- Sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wanna learn. Okay, some of us are here. Why are you it's getting your knife skills better, shit. dude, yeah. if it's not to cook? <laughs> It was very intense how you leaned across to do that. Listen, I, 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 didn't, I didn't realize I had leaned away. <laughs> <laughs> My name's <is> Mark. <laughs> I'm here to be serious. Yes, chef. <laughs> yes, chef. <laughs> yes, chef. The first day, I noticed that this girl had the burner on way too low for her soup. I turned it up for her and explained that food won't cook unless it's hot. She didn't seem to know. Boy, I already hate this guy. <laughs> we could end it there, and I'm like, you're the asshole, there's dude, a, there's shut now, up. He wants to learn better knife skills. There's gonna be a knife accident. He's losing a finger. <laughs> yeah, it's as if there's not a teacher at this cooking oh, class. God. I also brought over all of her ingredients so she wouldn't have to run around panicking when it came time to blend in her herbs. She thanked me, but moved her ingredients further down the table away from me. I thought it was rude, but didn't dwell on it. God, People. <laughs> I didn't I dwell on it. I know she did this thing. I didn't dwell but on it. It's not because of me, obviously. Yeah. At the next class, she was supposed to be melting chocolate, which is one of the easiest things to do. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> you just put it in your pocket and do jumping jacks. <laughs> <laughs> At the next class, she was supposed to be melting chocolate, which is one of the easiest things to do. I noticed that her chocolate was starting to melt in the pot, but that she was getting a drink from her water bottle. I immediately turned her burner down and called her over just to explain how food sometimes needs to be watched and things can happen very quickly. Again, she was moody and rude. Finally, at our third class, she was actually one of the students put in charge of the entree. Up until now, she had been making appetizers and desserts, which people in the class can choose either to eat or ignore. But it's expected that everyone will at least try the entree. I was, of course, really concerned for my classmates. I didn't want anyone to get sick or eat something disgusting. While we were cooking, serving ourselves the different courses, I hovered around the entree and tried to make casual comments like, that doesn't look completely fresh to me, and asked her what, sh what help she needed. The main course was fish and I didn't think that uh, that an inexperienced cook like her could safely serve the dish to everyone else. Was it puffer fish? <laughs> it was, yeah. 
<laughs> so before eating, at the end of each class, the instructor asks us what we learned from each day. I was already frustrated from dealing with this girl that could barely cook at all, so I answered honestly, don't trust someone who can't even boil soup to bake a salmon. Most people chuckled, but after the girl got upset, some folks came up to me afterwards and said that I should have given her food a chance. I disagree, because I think people can actually get sick from eating bad cooking, and this girl shouldn't have agreed to cook for everyone if she was this poorly skilled. Bro, you're in a beginner's cooking class. And like what he mentioned of like what she did are just like little things. Like it's not ruining the dish. The chocolate's not going bad because it's melting when yeah. she's taking a sip of water. Yeah, how long is this gulp? Like how yeah. how did you like look at this, look at her, look at this, look at her, and then I have to get involved. I have to I have to he walk was, he over. He was already judging Excuse her, me? that's the thing. So the yeah. moment she did something he didn't deem up to par, it was, oh, she's doing it again. Yeah. She's such a horrible cook. Wow. She's poisoning the whole class. Oh my God. Some comments here, in quotations from taken from the story. Uh, the first day I noticed that this girl had the burner on way too low for her soup. I turned it up for her and explained that food won't cook unless it's hot. Parenthesis, she didn't seem to know. <laughs> this man is insufferable. I don't know what I would have said if some guy said this to me. Um, why is he acting like the teacher? Someone, something tells me OP already knows the basics and he just came here to feel superior over everyone and bully people. Uh, someone else said OP did not join a beginner's class to learn gourmet techniques. He joined the class to lecture other people and hopefully get worshipped by his classmates and the teacher. Remember when Monica took that beginner's cooking class on Friends just to feel superior? Yeah. Uh, someone else said don't trust someone who can't boil a soup to bake a salmon. And don't trust someone who doesn't know what a simmer is to give you cooking advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, this guy is definitely just uh, an absolute narcissist. I um, love the the scientific analysis, though, because he's like, look, I you're baking the salmon. I don't want people to get sick because I think bad food can make people sick. <laughs> what a scientific thought. You eat salmon raw. You eat fish however you want. This isn't chicken. This isn't pork. Yeah, like but, because she touched it, the ingredients didn't suddenly. Like, yeah, you know, they weren't worse. All the of the sudden. teacher who's in charge yeah. of the food safety is there teaching yeah. everyone food safety. There's literally like an there's literally an instructor. Yes, yeah. who's being paid to teach. Who apparently there. thought she was up to par to like work on the entree for everyone to eat. Yeah, but this guy has a problem with it. Right, bro. It's a it's a beginner's class. You know, there's tons of other people there who don't know how to cook, but he picked the young woman to like. Mm. To, to single out. Unfortunately, and that's where you're like, he was already noticing her. And that's where like, the the second time that happens to her, cause probably another weirdo is gonna happen in her life. Now I hope that she's gonna immediately spot it and like call it out and be like, you're being really creepy to me. You need to stop paying attention to me right now. I'm gonna tell the instructor. Cause you obviously are overanalyzing me for multiple reasons. Yeah, like and this trying person, not to escalate it. Like just moving her ingredients over like, okay, I just won't be in his yeah, space. So hopefully so he leaves hard. me alone. Yeah. And instead he's just like, no. Yeah, yeah, and he's touching her Oh, thing. she's being yeah. rude to me. It's like, no, she's there to, she's yeah. paying for this class yeah. to learn from this instructor and you're being f weird. Mm -hmm. Dude, ugh, yep, yep, that's all. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think anyone should be tracked and followed, but when I hear stories like this, I'm like, you should, we should always know where you are. Yeah, he, <laughs> everyone else has been like, you, we should know where you are all the time. Uh, he knew God. enough to use a burner account. Like, he knew he did something. Exactly. Yeah. No, they use a throwaway account because they're like, okay, I know I f***ed up. I know I'm a weirdo. Yeah. But yeah. come on. No, uh, it, it's, I, I, he didn't respond, he also didn't respond to any of the comments, so he <laughs> probably didn't read them. He was too busy d DMing them being like, this is actually how you write a comment. Actually, <laughs> you didn't write a comment correctly. This <laughs> is how you read it. Oh, they had deleted this throwaway account. Yeah. See, that's my, always, that's always my thought with like Reddit stories. It's like, okay, once you start being dogged on, like, don't you just like delete and move on? <laughs> like, yeah. And also you wrote the story from your perspective, trying to justify, like he's writing that she was rude and all mm -hmm. this stuff and you still, everyone's calling your bullshit. Yeah. You gotta feel like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really am a bad person. Yeah. You know, I wonder if at this point we could create, you know, uh, 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 a testament, uh, uh, an old text where we put together these Reddit stories in order to create the parables that is the future, you know, societal fabric. Instead of the Bible, we've got all these goddamn assholes <laughs> that you can read the story, right? <laughs> So that you can look and you can never be this asshole. It's so useful, you know? It's so great that on the internet is just logs and logs of how to never behave. It's so specific. If you're ever in a cooking class, just don't do this. It's like, oh, now I know. If I'm ever uh, wanting to marry my girlfriend, don't surprise her with it. Ask her. Oh, thank you so much. No, it's a good book. See, 
I totally agree with that. However, especially on like the dating thing or the uh, the marriage thing, like I, there was a story, you know, there's guys that are like, oh, well, it's the thought that counts because they're like proud that they didn't do something for you. <laughs> yes. Like they're like, oh, you know, I thought about buying you flowers, but I didn't do that. So, but I want to tell you about it because it's the thought that counts. Oh, you know? God, you're so sweet that yeah. you thought about right. maybe doing something once. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but I decided to save money instead, but I'm going to tell you about it because it's the thought that counts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I. Uh, my mom's ex did that to her and I was like I'm never gonna tolerate that from a guy and suddenly on on TikTok I just shared that and the comments are like okay so this is why you're single and this is why you will never have anyone do anything nice for you and also yeah well the flowers were three dollars but like maybe he wanted to do something else with the three dollars or whatever and it's you like bought three so, lottery tickets no see but like that's the thing it's like we could give people a guidebook of here is how to be the perfect boyfriend the perfect person the perfect uh, student of a cooking class and there will still be people like actually yeah I don't want to do that no. and therefore I will not and they end up in the book <laughs> they're the <laughs> assholes the, <book>. <laughs> the never-ending agenda <laughs> yeah it just keeps the volumes it's <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we had some pretty extreme ones today. The the conventions had were actually pretty tame compared to the people in the outside world from mm -hmm. conventions. Yes. Honestly, um, I'm down with this like furry gang of justice. Yeah. They, they need yeah. to go to the cooking class. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. If he turns yes. around and a giant blue dog is there just like, bam! It just, would, it it like, would be a fire hazard. Yeah. It would be a fire hazard. Yes, yes it would. Because you know those things are flammable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> show up in a salmon costume to kick his ass as he's telling me how to cook salmon. <laughs> are there any fish furries? There's oh, those are called be. murs. <laughs> Sorry, I have no idea. Amanda, thank you for being here and thank you for <laughs> joining us with Noah is always a very fun time. Uh, Noah always says the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life on every single one of these shows. And today might be the best one. <laughs> are you still thinking about the teeth? I am still uh. thinking. That. I hope it makes it into the episode. Thank you for bringing your expertise. You had some real personal knowledge to bring here. Yes. That was super helpful. Uh, Thank you. I'm very excited to go see your experiences at conventions. Thank I'm going to go watch that right after Literally, this. we're um, going to go watch FurryCon right after this. Where Perfect. where can people find you? You can find me on YouTube at Swell Entertainment, on TikTok at Swell Entertainment, and everywhere else is just love you to Volca. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. As always, thank you for watching and uh, let us know in the comments what types of themes you'd like, what subreddits you want us to cover. Bye!